What's up my producer friends? Today I've got a really special tutorial for you. A lot of you have asked me on Instagram to do a tutorial on how I use my favorite synthesizer sign plant and yeah today's the day. Oh by the way go follow me on Instagram if you haven't already so you will never miss any new music or any new tutorials. Thank you. Sign plant is a very crazy and unpredictable synthesizer that I use in almost all of my songs and uh, yeah over the years I've collected some tips and tricks that could help you master this beast. I will break down this tutorial into two parts. First off, I will talk about how you get new sounds and the second part will be about the DNA of the synthesizer. But I've got to preface this video by saying that I'm by no means a sound plant expert. These are just some of the tricks that I've learned over the years that helped me to get cool and new sounds out of this synthesizer. So yeah, I hope you learned something new and let's get into it. Okay, so here we are. Um, this is the layout of sign plant. I will just quickly go through the main options that you have. Up top here we have some settings that I don't really want to go into because they're not that important. Um, we have this knob, which is very important. These are the genes, the, like the DNA, as I called it before. Uh, we'll get into this uh, in the second part. Um, we have a redo and undo button and we have some presets. This is really empty right now because I'm on a new laptop, but uh, my old folders are stacked with hundreds of different sign plant presets that I did. Maybe I'll do a sign plant preset pack sometime. Let me know if you're interested. Right here you have a tuning knob, which does exactly that. It tunes the sound up and down. You have a tonality, which doesn't really do anything right now, but it usually like um, decides how detuned the chorus of the sound is. It just depitches a bit, but um, yeah, it doesn't really do much on this sound. You have effect. This one is just a dry wet knob on how much the effect, which will be programmed in the in the genes, is applied to the sound. We are at fifty percent. This is a hundred. And this is zero, completely dry. Yeah, we'll just keep this at 50% for now. And this is the release, very simple. Doesn't do anything right now. Uh, yeah, as I said, I will say this a lot in this tutorial, but this program is very unpredictable. So sometimes some knobs just don't do anything and you don't know why. Um, this is just something that you have to live with, but that's also the beauty of this program. You never really know what you're going to get out of it. Um, volume, velocity, sensitivity and wheel scaling is not that important, but uh, I hope you guys, I guess you guys know what it is. And this is the heart of the synthesizer. You have those knobs outside. These are just notes. It's just a keyboard. And you have this thing right here. The green plants are called branches and you can grow them by dragging this circle out and in which uh, manipulates the sound and now I want to show you guys what I usually do when I work with sound plant and how I get my sounds so the first step would be to right click and select new random seed This will just randomly like give you some kind of sound. You, I don't really know how it works and how it randomly generates it, but it just gives you a random sound. And usually my tip would be to find a random seed that already sounds like a good one. Because if you're starting with a really bad bass, this kind of circle doesn't really work that well usually. And now what you do is you grab this circle and you open those branches and grow those branches to the end. And now, if I go through the notes, all of them sound completely different. And this is the beauty of this program. So now what you do is you just click through all of the notes. Some of them maybe won't sound at all. This one sounds interesting, you just select one of them that you like. Uh, for me this would be this one. You go on to the branch, you see this brown dot there, so this one is selected. You right click and you clone the selected branch. And now all of them sound like this. Already sounds pretty cool um, because I mean I didn't have to do any sound design for this. I'm not the best at sound design anyways, so this is the instrument for me. And now you could either save this one because you're already happy with this one. 
let's just quickly save this one because I think it's already pretty interesting. And what you can do now is you can click on this little brown brain kind of knob. And what it will do is it will collapse all of the branches. It will still sound the same. But what the trick is now is you grow them out again. So you go all the way out with this circle. And now the sounds sound different again. All of them sound very quirky and some of them sound pretty nice. So this is the cycle that you repeat all the time until you end up with a sound that you really, really like. And you don't really have to do any sound design. You just, you're just listening to it and uh, selecting uh, sounds that you like. For me, this one sounds pretty cute. Let's clone this one. Pretty cool. Um, but I will probably go back to the one that I saved before because I don't like this one too much, but you just understand how you have to do this. You have to make this cycle a lot of times. I usually put hours into just sitting in front of sign plant and just repeating this cycle all again, all over again until you end up with a random, very, very special, cool sound. So now let's get into the second part, the DNA of this sound. As you can see, as I said before, it's this knob up here and you get thrown into this screen. This is like the gene of this sound. Let's just quickly go through all of those knobs. They tend to look a bit confusing, but it's actually not that hard, except for that you never really know what you're gonna get out of it. It's all really unpredictable, but that's the beauty of this program. Oh, and I have to say, uh, maybe I think there's a way to mod it, but I haven't really found it out yet, but you cannot assign those knobs to MIDI, which is pretty sad because if you want to do an automation in Ableton in a song, you have to record the audio of it and do the automation manually. You can't uh, uh, have a MIDI automation. But I think there's a mod for it, but I've never really came around to figuring that out. So that's just how I do it. It's not perfect, but I think it's enough. Let's look at those branches. The first one is envelope, time, loop, and tilt. Those just mess with the how much the sound is repeated or if there's a loop in it. You'll just have to listen to what the knobs do. So the time actually here just uh, decides how long the sound uh, lasts. The envelope loop. Yeah, just gives it a, 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 a arpeggio and the tilt. just modulates the attack a bit. Um, you have volume attack, volume decay, volume sustain. Those are pretty self-explanatory. You have modulation attack, modulation decay, SH, don't know, I'm not sure what this is, and velocity. Um, I guess those are knobs that you also have, just have to listen what they do. Some of them don't do anything, some of them just slightly modulate the, the sound. You'll just have to try and error uh, to get where you want to be with your sound. Uh, you have a LFO. That doesn't really do anything as well. Maybe I'm doing something wrong, but it just uh, doesn't seem to do anything on this sound. And here is the important part. You have A form and B form. So those two are oscillators. And the most important one is the A. This is just oscillator one. And with the form, you can decide how your sound sounds. So if you actually want to make your sound a bit different, you can work with this knob. Also some really weird modulation stuff going on in the background that I don't know how it works, but uh, yeah, as you see, you can just play with this button. And just see what it uh, gives you. You have a pink noise. You don't really hear it because of the filter and you have color. Oh, you hear it now. Yeah. And you have a frequency, which is just a pitch. 
I would not mess with this too much because you want it to be in key with your with the rest of your song and usually it's by default on a normal scale but if the sound sounds too high pitched then maybe this is the place where you can change it and modul modulation mod doesn't do anything here but maybe on a different sound it would and B form is also the second modulator which just kind of FM modulates this one at the moment it just modulate the, the second oscillator modulates the first mod uh, oscillator oh confusing yeah you'll just have to check out and try and there what the knobs do you have FM crazy modulation Yeah, just have to mess around with those as well. You have a filter. It's not really a cutoff, like a normal low or high cut. I don't know exactly what kind of filter it is, but uh, you can play around with the modulation as well. Uh, the modulation, the filter modulation modulates the filter. Yeah, and this is the most important and last part. This is the FX part. So this is the part where I said before the effect, this is the knob that controls how much you hear the FX part in your DNA. So let's put this to 100% because then we'll hear it more clearly. The mix um, usually doesn't do that much, but it's basically just the same as in the front uh, where you uh, decide how much your you want your effect to be. You have the length. You have damp, chorus, and size. Size is the most important uh, parameter because if you pull this one very, very close or uh, almost to zero, it changes the sound a lot. Um, so this is a knob that I definitely urge you to play around with. Yeah, and let's uh, play with the release a bit. Already sounds very very nice so yeah this is the the way that I work with sound plant I usually repeat this process a lot of times until I find a sound that I'm almost happy with and then I go into the DNA and play around with the knobs a bit and look if something finds me and so this is the sound that we just quickly did which already sounds pretty nice Sounds pretty nice. I mean, that's basically it. Um, I'll probably use this sound for a future song. And yeah, I hope you've learned some good lessons to, on how to use sampling. Also, if you don't have any tips for me that I stuff that I did wrong, you can definitely uh, write it in the comments. I'm happy for it. I'd like to learn new stuff about it as well. If somebody knows how to get those MIDI assignments working, please tell me. I would love to have uh, to be able to modulate the DNA as well inside of Ableton. It's a great program. It's only about 90 bucks. I mean, Christmas is over, but I'm sure you find some money for this. It's definitely worth the buy. So yeah, I really hope you've learned something new today and you've enjoyed the tutorial. Let me know in the comments if you have any new recommendations on stuff that I could show you guys. Have a great one, stay safe, stay healthy, goodbye.